the microphone caught that. <laughs> I'm here, professional, <laughs> ready to review. Okay, by request from, and I'm not making this up, Bubba. <laughs> Bubba, like birth name Bubba? Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Bubba Catlett requested. Oh, that's a good name. I know. That's like a book name. Yeah. You probably were with uh, Huck Finn. Yeah. Bubba Catlett. On a raft. Bubba Catlett. Yeah. yeah. That's racist. Uh, so he said, hey, I started with Jim Beam. Right. Right? Can you review it and then tell people where to go after that? Uh, so in terms of a progression? He says he learns things every show. So he's looking for the next step up towards something more complex, interesting, challenging than that. Yeah, so what I started with, Bubba, was Jim Beam's single barrel. Okay, why that one? Well, they they select, uh, they go through, so remember that Beam also makes Knob Creek and, was it Booker's, I think? Sure. And so they're, they're super fancy, small, small batch, Any smaller. Board? Right? Let me help you. Um, you seem port? to be having some problems here. You're gonna go ahead and pour? Yeah. All right. So the middle of the warehouse, and this is, I'm not, I'm, I've heard this, I could be wrong. The middle of the warehouse is using all the knob creeks and all those, that's where all those barrels come from. The outside's a son of a bitch. Problem? You're no longer pouring. The, <laughs> 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 the outsides, tops, edges, all the places where barrels can have a lot of differentiation. They're going through those and picking the best of those barrels of less than 1%. And that's what goes into the Jim Beam single barrel. Smells classic, man. Smells. Uh, I think Jim Beam is damn awesome whiskey. And so, so that's sweet. Uh, there's no downside to drinking a Jim Beam. Uh, one of our sommeliers, Aaron Beavers, syrupy. who is a badass. Syrupy. He is a rep for Suntory Beam. He's a luxury brand rep for Suntory Beam. Mm. He brought me like six of the different Beam How lines. many Jim Beams are there? Uh, I mean, as far as different bottlings? Yeah. Oh, there's six, seven, eight. Really? Yeah. Wow, wow, okay. Yeah, we've got three or four. I'll pull a couple of them out. But Jim, they, if I had to pick a, uh, if you walk in and just say, give me a, a bourbon, sure. and they've only got the bare minimum and they've got Jim Beam, I would be grateful and glad to drink Jim Beam. Well, Jim Beam is one of those ones that will be Pretty much everywhere. Yeah, but uh, no, I'm feeling. I'm, I'm on the nose. I'm getting the classic. I've experienced this scores of times before. I'm expecting, mm -hmm. and I don't mind it at all. Caramel it's, corn. It, there's a reason why. Yeah, it's a classic bourbon. Caramel yeah. candy corn, mm -hmm. vanilla, toffee, um, oak wood. Ooh, not very complex, but just really friendly. This uh, this reminds me a bit of the um, Four Roses. No, the Four Roses is way sharper. There's more rye in the Four Roses. You think roses. so? I, I definitely I think challenge so. you on that. Well, <laughs> you're just trying to do that to get some Four Roses. But I'll do it anyway because you're wrong. All right, we'll see. <laughs> As if I don't have enough. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Working towards a pint of whiskey here. Mm, so while you do that, comment Shelby Dog. Wait, wait, wait. We need the we need the budget Four Roses. Rex. Yeah. Looks like a South American tin pot dictator or Pablo Escobar from the side with sunglasses <laughs> and belly. Yeah, totally. Needs an admiral's hat with lots of scrambled egg decoration on the brim to complete the look. Any South American whiskeys to review? Did you watch that TV series with the Pablo Escobar? Uh, Narcos? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Totally is great. Yeah, super good. Okay, so this is Four Roses, which I am going to go from memory as saying much higher rye content. And so much spicier. By much, you mean like 7.3%? No, dude, that is way spicier yeah. than this. Jim Beam single barrel is two to three times as smooth as this. And you yeah. know, when you talk out of your ass, it's muffled through <laughs> your pants. Vroom, vroom. It's hard to understand you. Two to three, vroom, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> Like, <laughs> Ace Ventura, pet right. detective. So, uh, Akesh. Mm, but you, you do that last name. Ah, oh, man, I can't pull that off. <laughs> Mahandarada. Yes. Mahandarada. Yes. That's, yes. So he suggested Indian whiskeys, and we're going to do them. Uh, I'm a big single malt fan and would love to rewatch it. Amroot Fusion single yeah, malt so from India. 
And, uh, I replied to like three people saying I don't have M Fusion, right. and then I bought it yesterday. He's a binge watcher, by the way, so we are compelled. Yeah. So I now there was like three people that requested M Fusion, and and, and and we will do it. We will do it. Just not this video. Whiskey is. I think India is the most popular uh, popular whiskey market in. It is from just sheer numbers, right? Because there's so many damn people in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just from sheer numbers alone, the whiskey demand, and I think that started depressingly enough when the English tried to take over. So India. is there not a tremendous amount of market penetration in China? Uh, not near as much as there should be. There should be lots more penetration. <laughs> Japan has been taken over with whiskey. You know what? They love whiskey. What I want to do is my fair share to make sure penetration happens. <laughs> You're going to keep going with this. Uh, uh, you don't think there should be penetration? <laughs> I, you know, I can't contribute. I can't contribute to this debauchery. Look, in order to share the love of whiskey, we should penetrate all the markets we can penetrate with whiskey. <laughs> the whiskey love. I think I've laughed more in these last three videos. But I needed this. It was a long, uh, a long week. Uh, are we still? Uh, yeah, okay. So here's the thing about China. Uh, what's cool about China is that all of their most famous beers are German. So there was all these German beer communities that settled in China, and then they, like most German communities, made their own beers. Yeah. So all the most famous Chinese lagers are German recipes. Hmm. And so I would not. I've expected them. they should be doing whiskey. I yeah. mean, there's a hell of a lot of them, and they uh, they know how to drink for, sh for sure and smoke. Yeah, is that racist? No. Everything I say is racist. No, it's a cultural thing, and okay. Japan drinking is a cultural thing on your off time, right? To just and Korea, same thing. A lot of the Asian cultures, alcohol is a pretty serious component I'm just of relaxation. Assume, I'm just gonna assume everything I say is racist. Yeah, I'll assume that too. they're all smoke. Do you want to try another uh, Jim Beam? Thanks to Aaron Beavers? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Bubba, for you, we're going to try one more Jim Beam. While you get that, Adam Farnsworth. Uh, I really enjoy whiskey and cigars, and he wants to figure out a way to interact with them more. I'm kicking around the idea of starting a whiskey and cigar lounge someday, probably in the distant future. I'm looking to be talked out of it. It would be a ton of work, and also thought it would be fun to try my hand at distilling. Living in Portland, every no everybody already knows how to brew a beer. Is it worth... It to set up a micro distillery, or is it feasible possible to maybe get a barrel and some whiskey from MGP to self? Okay, so here's the thing. I told them this. Hope you like compliance, bro. Yeah, I told them this. Like, dude, uh, you can brew at home and you're fine. Right. But you distill at home and you're illegal. Right. You so, need, and in order to source from MGP, you need a lot of money. Yeah. And some lawyers. If you want to do some micro distilling, well, no, that's not true. If you just want to make your own shit and eat gone still, right. uh, there's two things you can do. Uh, actually, there's only one thing you can do legally. <laughs> really? You can uh, you can create a little shed in your backyard. Is this moonshine? Uh, yeah. Oh. Create a shed in your backyard and submit it to the feds for a TTB license and get it just, uh, authorized as a story. You're going to have to post all the typical sh**. Now, that's just totally unreasonable. Uh, do you want to try the Jim Beam Bonded, which means four-year-old, right? Sure. Yeah. Or do you want to try the black extra aged? You know what? I think they're both deserving. No, no, we gotta pick one. Which one? We're running out of time. Are we? I Bonded think. or black aged? I think let's do the black does aged. Does that one give me foil? No, neither of them does. Man. Where's your glass? They are. It's... No, that's my glass. I've like licked all of the edges of that glass. Alright. Great X3. <laughs> it's toy spilled someone up. I will. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. No, you're not gonna. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great X3. Wait, wait, wait. I want to. Wait, wait, wait. Smell that because it's totally different than this single barrel. Okay. You say totally different. Way more dramatic. That single barrel is super smooth. This black extra age has got some edge to it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm checking. No, it's same alcohol content. No, it's um, it's more vibrant. Got, uh, it's more aggressive on the nose. No, it's lower alcohol content, but it's still more aggressive. Right. So that extra aging, it really punched it up a bit. It, it really soaked into that wood there. Or I guess the wood leaked into the whiskey. Yeah, it, it was serious. It's good. It's still good. I actually prefer the single barrel. 
yeah, it's a little too sharp and pointy on the, what is it, the black thing? Mm-hmm. Whatever it was. We'll put that up there. Mm. What was your last comment? Great X. I realized that this video was large. Okay. See, here's the thing. There's so many amazing comments saying that my video was life-changing. I'm a genius. <laughs> I picked those for you. <laughs> no, but they're not in here. You said oh, yeah, I know. I left those out on purpose. <laughs> you did. <laughs> they're just a passing reference. And then... <laughs> I realized this video was largely about unveiling the Mooch necklace. I wanted to talk about Woodford for a second. Double Oak has a scent that I have never smelled in whiskey. Banana. Oh, so here's the thing. Yeah. Banana is a thing that happens with certain chemicals and certain blends that mash bills of whiskey. Mm -hmm. And if you can't age past it, it remains dominant. Hmm. Right? So Now, here's an example. Your banana whiskey. I took a moonshine from Copper Run Distillery in Missouri, close to Branson. Right. And I aged it in a five liter barrel for four months. Mm -hmm. Smell that. It's banana bread. It smells like banana bread. Mm -hmm. Now, with time, I might have gotten past that just liquid banana bread, but uh, that's a thing that is not uncommon yeah. in bourbons. Okay. Uh, Jim Beam, they make some good stuff. Nothing. Um, Stick to the single barrel. Nothing. If you had to choose between the Jim Beam Classic. It's not weird. It's not complex. It's interesting and classic. Or no, no, no. It's, yes. It's uh, friendly and classic. Accessible. Yes. Uh, out of all of the ones I've tried so far, the single barrel stands out. Yeah. So, mm. until tomorrow, may crazy stay this side illegal. May you return to something, something. I don't really care. I say the same may thing. May return no. before we have time to miss you. Know you what? It's endearing. I'm not endearable. Well, I'm adorable. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.